In this video, we're going to talk about how we can reload the level when we press the backspace button. Uh, sometimes we just want to reset everything and start over. And so we'll talk about how to do that. But check this out. What if I'm playing the game and imagine that this ball does not exist anymore? Like maybe we fall in a lava pit or something. I still want to be able to reset my game, which means that my player controller always exists, but my ball may not. So I'm going to start setting up some specific inputs that I can call from the player controller whether or not my ball pawn exists. And just to remind you at this point, we've already set up some input actions for our ball up here when we added our mapping context. We had it our input map, and these are all of our ball specific actions. But we want other actions that we can use on the player controller that are different than the ball. Like if the ball doesn't exist, we still wanna be able to do some things. So I'm gonna start setting that up by creating a second action map. So not adding to this one, just a totally different one that I'm going to attach to the player controller. So we'll have one on the ball and then this extra one on the player controller. So let's do that. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create my input action and we'll call this IA underscore reload level because that's what it's doing. I'm going to quickly save that and open it up. And for my triggers, I'm just gonna do a pressed event. Let's keep it simple. I just press a button. Let's save that. I'm gonna move a little bit more quickly now since we've done this before, like this should be review at this point. I'm also gonna make my input mapping context and this is my IMC underscore ball game. Now this is gonna be related to all of our inputs that are related to the overall game, not the ball. And we'll attach this one to the player controller. Let's open that up. This is our mapping. We need to add the reload action that we just made. So if you expand that, so add a new one and then find our IA underscore reload level. Okay, and on our keyboard press, I'm gonna put mine on backspace like that. Make sure it's the keyboard one, hit save, exit out. And now we need to set up our player controller to listen to this mapping context. Remember our ball is listening to this one. Our player controller is gonna listen to this one. Let's go over here. We're going to open up our player controller. So in begin play after these other things happen, let me maximize this. So I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna type out enhanced. You're gonna get two options, the top or the bottom. I'm gonna do the one under the player controller. If I do this one, I'm just gonna plug in uh, to self. You might be able to use the other one. I just, I haven't tested that one. So you type self. This is just meaning that since we're in this player controller, that this is a reference to the same actor that we're inside of. So we're gonna plug that into this enhanced input local player system. And we're gonna drag off of that and say, add mapping context, move that up, connect it. And then the mapping context that we wanna add is the one that we just created, the ball game. Make sure it's that one. We're gonna compile, save. And now that we're listening, let's create our input action event to test it. I a underscore, and we're looking for a reload level. Make sure it's the enhanced action events one at the top. This is our red node so we can pull off of. When we press the backspace key, assuming that we are actually listening and we have this set up, when that happens, we're just gonna do a little print, reload level. So I'm gonna use this to test everything up to this point. So if I see this pop up, this reload level, that means that our listening to our backspace was successful and that we are actually listening to this. So let's try this out. So save it, hit play. Okay, I see that at the top left, perfect. So now that that is working, we need to reload our level. Now there are a lot of ways you could do this, but remember anything that is game wide or some common functionality that affects a lot of the game rules, I think I wanna put on the top level in the game mode. So let me open up my ball game mode. Now, if you see this pop up, this just means that up to now we've been customizing our game mode, but we haven't been adding any functionality. If I want to add functionality, I'm gonna open the full blueprint editor, clicking that button. And this is gonna open up our overall graph and all the other stuff that we're used to inside of a blueprint. So once we're in here, I can make an event down here, but if possible, it's usually better to make a function. It's just a little bit cleaner, it's tucked away and it's a little bit more optimized, I believe. So over here, I'm gonna press the plus button under function, double check that you're inside the ball game mode, not the player controller. And we're gonna call this function, I pressed F2 for the rename, just in case it didn't work for you. I'm gonna call this reload level. So now we're inside the reload level function and I need to add the functionality for reloading my level. So I'm gonna drag off of this. I'm gonna type git current level name. 
Now what we're trying to do here is get the name of the level that we have currently open and then just open that level by its name. So normally we would do something like this. We would type in open level by name and then we wouldn't want to type that name in, right? So what I'm doing is I'm just getting the current level's name and then I can plug it in there directly like that and then it's going to convert it. This is just a way of reopening the same level that we have open up. It's kind of a shortcut for doing that. So if I compile save, our function now does what it's supposed to. It's inside of the game mode, but we need to figure out how we can call this reload level inside of our game mode. Now we've been doing this before, but we'll do it again. Instead of printing that statement, I'm gonna come back over into my ball player controller. I'm going to get my game mode. So right click, get game mode. And this is gonna give me the base class. Now I'm not adding things to the base class. I created a custom new ball game mode. So I need to cast to ball game mode. So we'll drag that up, we'll plug it in. And now from this specific ball game mode, we can access everything inside of it. One of which is our reload level function. So I'm gonna drag off. You have to make sure you drag off of this one as ball game mode, otherwise you won't see it. And if you type in reload level, you should see it right there. So when we press backspace, we will reload the level. Compile, save, let's try it out. Come back in here, hit play, click inside the window, move around and hit backspace. Okay, so it reloads a level. You can also see that if I'm picking up collectibles, right, I have three. If I reload the level, it resets everything and just sets everything to its default state, which is what we want. So this is how we can set up reload level functionality on our game mode, but separate it out so that we're only listening for input inside of our player controller and making sure that that's not tied in with our ball stuff. Um, we're already starting to split our functionality a bit, but in the end, it'll be really clean, it'll be separate, and it'll be easy to expand upon. One last note, if you want a quick little optional challenge, I would recommend trying to do something similar to what we just did, but by adding a quit function on a key press inside of our player controller, remember how we did our new action map, create a new input action for quit. You could call this quit application or whatever. Yeah, you know, we'll call it quit application. And if you add that input action, you put it on a key, I would put it on escape or something like that. And since we're already listening to that map, then you can tie into that input action event. You can listen for it and then put a function on your game mode for quitting the application. Any of the larger functionality you may want on your game mode. So you make a new function over here for a quit application or quit or whatever you want to call it. You come over here, you'd make a new input action for quitting the game. You would cast your game mode and, and do it the same way that we did reload level. But try and get this working. It's just a little optional thing. But I think if you go through that process one more time, it'll help it stick a little bit better.